Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the uh, November 17th meeting of the Community Redevelopment Agency. Uh, first order of business is approval of minutes of the previous meeting. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? Move to adopt. Second. Motion and a second. Is there any discussion on the minutes of the previous meeting? If not, all those in favor signify with aye. 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 Any opposed? No nays. The minutes are approved. Uh, business Relations Manager Greg Polly now will present a status update on the city's redevelopment area. Welcome, Mr. Polly. Thank you, sir. Uh, good evening, everyone. If I could please bring up the presentation. This is the November 17, 2020 CRA update. First, just a quick snapshot of the CRA budget. This is the same budget that uh, was recently ratified along with the city's budget. Um, shows you a side-by-side -side comparison there of last year's adjusted uh, in comparison to this year's budgeted amounts. You see the uh, shared revenues from Hillsborough and Temple Port at 232.152, city revenue transfers 260.758 for total revenue of 492.910 with the same amount being expensed back out to the general fund. Wait, get back. Yes, ma'am. 419, 625? That's last year's. This year's is 492, 910. Okay. Uh, the first uh, project I'll share with you this evening is an update on Waverly Terrace. As you recall, Waverly Terrace is uh, the apartment community that's currently being developed by the Richmond Group of Florida. The contractor on this project is Bradley Construction. It sits uh, on 4.85 acres south of Bullard and east of Bertha Palmer Boulevard. It involves 200 residential units with clubhouse and pool. The groundbreaking on this project was back in February and according to the builder schedule, they are at about 40% complete with their project. You've seen this rendering before. It shows the uh, elevations on, along the west side of all three buildings. And then the graphic to the far right shows the placement with respect to the overall footprint of the project. And I will warn all of you that this project is moving quickly. So I took my photos on Friday. I assure you they are now outdated. <laughs> It is moving literally that fast. Um, however, just uh, as a point of reference, this is along the north um, section of the project, looking southeast. That first building there all the way up to the fourth level is nor the north building closest to Bullard Parkway. There in the middle, you see the clubhouse kind of over in the corner there to the right. And in the far distant background, you see the south building. This image shows the exact opposite direction. Now we're on the south end of the project looking back to the north. You can see that the south building is now in the foreground to the right. Um, they are now just uh, going up with the second level there. Again, you can see the clubhouse, actually a little bit better view of the clubhouse here. It's uh, completely under roof and dried in and they are starting to do finish work on the interior. And then in the far distance on the far left, is the north building, which is the first one that I showed in the first image. The next project is uh, the Fountain Shops at Temple Terrace. The developer on this project is Paragon Property Group. The principal is Jared Moon. The contractor for this project is Park and Eliezer Construction. This project is located on 3.5 acres at the southeast corner of Bullard Parkway and North 56th Street. It involves uh, five separate buildings for shopping, dining, banking, and professional offices. The groundbreaking on this project was in October. Construction has commenced on the first four of the five buildings to be built on this site. You'll see them designated in the next couple of slides, buildings A, B, C, and D. You will see a building E, however, they have not commenced work on building E as of yet. Uh, staff is currently awaiting the final site plan submittal and that is i don't know if we have that one scheduled yet but that's what we're waiting on from that developer to bring all of those uh, 
I'm sorry, I said site plan. I meant to say plat, plat submittal to bring all of those plats in align with his project. There's the rendering shot of the um, fountain tower there on the corner. We're now kind of, the perspective is the intersection looking back to the southeast. And the graphic to the right shows the overall footprint, at least for the northern portion of that project. Uh, the arrow indicates the placement of the fountain tower. And then you can see buildings in the yellow, uh, A, B, and then again, as I mentioned, E has not yet commenced. Next slide shows you the elevations for the Chase Bank, which will occupy building A. Now we've moved to the southern portion of the same project. You'll see in the graphic on the right, building C and D. Those are the D being the southernmost building within this project, and that will be occupied in part by Starbucks. This uh, perspective along this graphic, or I'm sorry, along this rendering is along B Street looking back northwest into the project. And this is what it currently looks like. We're now looking from Bullard Parkway due south into the project. Uh, just past the uh, construction materials in the immediate foreground, you'll see building A foundation is being put into the ground and, and worked right there. And then a little further beyond that, you will see building B, which has uh, started to go vertical with the block wall. Can I, can I interrupt you for a question before sure. you move too far? Can you go back one slide? Sure. Sorry to interrupt your flow. And I should know the answer to this already. I'm kind of sorry to say I don't. The A Street and B Street, are those going to main be, um, continue to be city streets, or are those part of the private property? B Street is a public street and will at some point receive its own appropriate name for the area. A Street is private property. Okay, well that, that was going to be my next question is at what point in this project do we get around to naming these streets? Well, I guess we don't get to name A Street, they get to name it, right? It, they would have to apply. They would apply just like we <clears throat> would apply. So um, at what point do we get to the part of naming, because we named Bertha Palmer. Mm -hmm. At what point do we name these other streets? Um, I don't know that we've ever really thought about that yet. I, I, if we don't have addresses on there, I don't know what the purpose of naming the street would be. Um, all the addresses would be either on Bertha Palmer or 56th Street, as far as addressing, physical addresses are concerned. Um, with the parcel to the south of the Starbucks, depending on how they orient their buildings, we may not even have to name the streets. So. Okay. But at, there, at the, for instance, the main street going into Winn-Dixie doesn't have a name, although it's, you know, A, B, C, D, whatever, whatever significance it was, uh, the original thing. So we may not need, we may not need to name those streets, but if okay. we do, we'll bring them back to council. Okay. Well, the reason I ask is if we do need to name them, if they, if they get names, I was going to propose to the, maybe we have a discussion at some point in the future about how to do that because we named Bertha Palmer as a nod to our history. It would be kind of fitting to name whatever other little streets down there in this project with a nod to our history also. And it comes to mind that maybe we have some groups in town who might have contests or open that up to public. You know, I mean, I know it's 100 feet long, but it's... No, Still, we certainly, we're, we're bringing back the council and get yeah, council's just, wishes on it. All right, sorry to hold you up. Yeah, there. no, absolutely. To be perfectly honest with you, it's nothing that I've discussed with the city manager or discussed with the developer. Well, I just thought it'd be kind of nice to open that up to the public to have a contest to, you know, see what we get if we need to name them. Anyway, anyway move, you can move on. I'm sorry. I think we just finished that slide. And that is a different perspective of Building B. Uh, remember, Building B is immediately south of Chase Bank. Chase Bank, of course, Building A. Um, I'm actually over on the Bertha Palmer side now, looking to the west. So that yellowish building there in the background is actually on the other side of 56th Street. And you can see, uh, again, these buildings, uh, although they were, the, the walls were nearly full vertical, Last week, they're even further today. 
We've now moved over to the south end of that project. We're actually along 56th Street near B Street. Um, immediately to the right of that screen is the foundation work going in for building D, uh, and that is Starbucks, that will be Starbucks. And then slightly beyond that in the background is building C. The next project is the Enigma Plaza project. The developer is Enigma Realtors. Mr. Singh is the principal. Uh, redevelopment, <coughs> he is, this project involves the redevelopment of a pre-existing structure at 8633 North 56th Street. Uh, it's 34,000 square feet of space being converted into boutique retail space. The initial site plan has been submitted. Staff is currently awaiting updates from the developer. I've had several conversations with Mr. Singh uh, both telephone, email, and also web conference conversations over the last several weeks. Um, we have shared with him the concerns over the delays in the project and also the condition of the building um, that has obviously no longer living up to the standards of the area. Uh, very recently, we discovered that Mr. Singh is currently seeking to retain a new civil engineer to get back to get the project back on track and moving forward. In early October, we learned that Mr. Dick LaRosa passed away unexpectedly, and that was Mr. Singh's civil engineer. Um, Mr. Singh has been going through a selection process, and as of yesterday, he shared with me that he hopes to finalize his selection process by the end of this week. Once a new uh, engineer is secured, finalizing the previous plan will be his top priority. Um, he is having to identify an engineer that's willing to pick up another person's work and move it forward. So it is taking him a bit more effort than the normal selection process may involve. Um, he also shared with me that once he gets that engineer in place, he anticipates being able to uh, submit that updated plan that we've been waiting on within the next 30 days. And if you recall, that's the rendering, that's the line art drawing from his initial architectural submitting submittal that shows the west and north elevations of the Enigma Plaza building. The graphic on the right simply shows the footprint of the project. Mr. Pauly, he, yes. th that particular project has changed his ideas over, have changed a few times. And, at one point, he was considering the idea of wanting to purchase the, the next piece of property down to incorporate that into even a larger site plan. Is that, is that, has that been discarded, or is he still batting that around, or what's the status it, with that? It has not been completely discarded. There has been many discussions on that, as well as getting the first project off the ground. Um, I just learned recently that he has, he has spoken to about 10 engineers. Out of those 10 engineers, only a couple were even willing to take on the project. And he does have a short list, so it's not like he doesn't have an engineer. He does have a short list. Um, however, even amongst the short list, he's having to deal with project number one first. So he's, he hasn't abandoned his interest in the other portion of the project. He's just having to realign his focus to project number one first. The property at project number two is still listed for sale. It is still on the market. It is still available to other offers and bids. Uh, going back to uh, the screen here, we have O'Reilly Auto. The developer here is One Oak Development, redevelopment of a pre-existing restaurant site. As you recall, the old structure was taken down and the new structure was built at 5299 East Bush Boulevard. Construction on this project is nearly complete with an anticipated store opening. Uh, I spoke to the superintendent on this project just a couple of days ago and they're shooting for mid-December um, at the latest January for store opening. 
that's what the project currently looks like, and the graphic to the right shows the footprint sketch of the, of the project site. The next project is across the street. It's a proposed out parcel project that you will hear come before you in the next hour. It is a proposed site for uh, out parcel in front of the Tampa Mall at 5400 East Bush Boulevard. The applicant here is Sycamore Engineering. The tenant is Salem's Quick Service Restaurant. And the final plat is coming, as I mentioned, uh, for your consideration. Uh, Mr. Karpus will bring that to you in the next hour. The next project is the residential piece along uh, Overlook. Uh, not a commercial piece, it's a, a triplex residential place. Uh, it's uh, located at 9237 Overlook Drive. Construction's underway, it's now under roof. Uh, interior build out is continuing. And that is a current photo of what that project now looks like. The next project is a multi-single a multi single family home project uh, up off of Temple Heights at Overlook. This is the Silvio Palms Habitat for Humanity residential project. It involves 12 single family homes uh, with a centralized park. And the final plat is scheduled to come before you on this piece in December. The graphic to the right shows the uh, dedicated roadway and the 12 lots with the park there between lots five and six. Excuse me, how big are those lots again? I'm sorry? How big are those lots? Um, that would be a question for Mr. Karpus. I'm sorry, I don't know the dimensions on that. The, um, the next slide here we're going to talk about the three remaining available parcels. I just mentioned the one a moment ago. We still have the other parcel south of the Enigma Plaza project on the market. We also have this piece on the market located at 8901 North 56th Street. This piece is 1.69 acres located immediately west of the Waverly Terrace project and immediately south of the Fountain Shops project. And this is the project we briefly mentioned a moment ago, located at 8447 North 56th Street. This is an old restaurant structure sitting on 1.74 acres south of Chicago, immediately adjacent on the south side of the Enigma Plaza project. And the third of those three available parcels is the Riverside parcels. Uh, just a little over four acres located at 205 South River Hills Drive. It's the southern portion of the Temple Terrace redevelopment area. And this is adjacent to the Hillsborough River. And that completes the updates on the individual project updates. The last thing I would like to add in my update is the next scheduled CRA meeting is February 16th of 2021. And I'll be happy to field any questions that any of you may have. Council Mr. Schuster. Uh, what's the status? What, what is our broker telling us? What's his name? Kevin? Or? Patrick. Patrick. Patrick, Patrick Berman. What's he saying? I spoke to Mr. Berman. Um, I speak to him fairly regularly. Yeah. Um, I ask him specifically market conditions and current analysis. He has, uh, he's advising for us not to um, look at the current situation, more so push the outlook to a three to six months outlook, okay. because right now what we're seeing right now is everyone is kind of reeled in, um, offers have reeled in, uh, projects that are underway are going strong, however, new projects have, have gone through a bit of a stall. Um, he is hopeful that we will see things change into the new year, uh, but unfortunately, we're still, there's still a big question mark with regards to the impact on the economy. Um, but uh, we did have some interest in a couple of those pieces. One I just briefly mentioned, uh, we did have a little bit other interest in the 
um, 56th Street parcel next to Starbucks. Um, that was a low offer, and that buyer did not bring his offer in or up. Other questions, council members? I have a question about a different piece of property. If it's appropriate. You still have the floor, sir. Okay. Um, and I this is just just came to my head. What about the property? I guess it's your uh, uh, water treatment plant property. Are we doing anything with that? Are we going to be able to do anything with that? Um, I've been talking to some developers to see if somebody would be interested in developing a piece of property, either um, as a joint venture with the city or just selling it outright, but I haven't had much luck with the conditions of the market right now. Um, people just aren't looking to move right now. So uh, we'll continue having conversations with some developers and see if we can get some interest in it. Um, I continue to have a conversation, a very limited conversation right now with DOT about access to the piece of property. Uh, but pre-COVID, the last conversation I had with them, um, they were amenable to start talking about giving us access to Fowler Avenue. So uh, that would certainly change the dynamics of that piece of property considerably. Yeah. Um, so um, it's difficult to get a meeting with DOT or you know county. I mean, it's just it's it's hard right now to have a conversation about selling and developing property. Um, the, the two or three developers that I talked to are, are major hotel developers. Um, but, you know, the business with hotels right now, they're one of, they're very affected right now with the economy. So right. they're not building any new ones. Um, but they haven't said no. Let me put it that way. Okay. So. All right. Just curious. That's all I have. Mm -hmm. Other questions, council members? Mr. Yeah. Donahue. I have a question about the intersection at 56 and Bullard. So all four of those corners have been touched by the FDOT. Do you know what the progress is on that? Because we have one more corner to add the last mural and we're ready to go. Arts Council is ready to go as soon as they're finished. But of course, we're just waiting to see that they're finished. You know, is there any idea when they'll be done? I don't have that they, information. I'm not yeah, sure if Mr. They, Stevens they have completed their underground work and they've cleaned it up. Um, they've got uh, some light posts they're putting in. This is a, um, a countywide project that they're putting in light posts and additional lighting for safety um, at, at a lot of intersections. They're doing the same thing out at 301 and Harney Road. Um, I guess they've gotten some complaints about the intersections not being lit up properly. So we're working with them. We know what they're doing. Um, they have, um, uh, they've been requested to kind of push your development so that we can clean up the intersection because the intersection right now has still got cones all over the place and detours and everything else. Um, they have cleaned it up here in the last week. Um, and as far as I understand, they're done with their underground so that if we wanted to move forward with that other wall, that we, this would be a good time. We would be able to do that. So what, they, what they would do to complete their work would not affect the wall. So you, you well, but the artist doesn't want to work there until they're completely finished. Do so you have any idea? Um, I, I have no idea when they're going to put the lights in, ma'am. But we can find out for you. We can yeah. do that. It did give me a little heartburn when I drove by and saw all the work we had just finished, and then there were all those bricks piled up against it. So Yeah, me oh. as well. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, me as well. Ooh. But uh, I'll, I'll see if we can get some kind of schedule on there final completion on okay. things. But. Well, that'd be helpful. Thank you. Mr. Tullo. Thank you. Is there a master plan for the um, the uh, 5400 East Bush where they're putting the little restaurant on the corner behind Dunkin' Donuts? Is there a master plan? Like, do they plan on developing more out parcels? Has that been disclosed? Do you know? I, I don't know about a master plan. Um, Mr. Anisi is in the room. He may be able to speak to that. Um, I do know at one point when they were marketing the property for sale, they did offer a second out parcel as a ground lease, um, but I don't know where the, what, what the status of that is currently. The reason I'm asking that is if it would be nice to have a master plan 
if they plan on if you approve a certain project and then come back mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> it'd be nice to have the 30,000 foot elevation picture instead of things just start popping up sort of free-for-all on the side on overlook I see there's like what eight lots plotted little thin lots there I don't know if that's a plan or that was the piece that I saw again I was engaged with the sale or I was engaging with the realtor when it, the property was up for sale and that was the other out parcel discussed was the site over by overlook um, it was the property as it sits now plus the out parcel that's coming before you in an hour and then it was the piece that you mentioned over by overlook those were the two out parcels on with the main piece but i'm not familiar i don't know if mr anisi has any information on that or not no it would just sort of be i think helpful for the folks that are making the decisions to know what kind of impact this property could bring into the future i mean i think that quarter there has improved tremendously with the auto parts store and the public storage facility that has rejuvenated that little corridor there mm -hmm. the the flea market gets a little rough but you know i'm hoping that some of this new development will help you know enhance that whole that's why i was asking if there's a master plan for that so I, I know that Mr. Carpus has a dialogue with the property owner. Um, I can certainly ask him if he's familiar. Um, I, like I said, I myself am not, uh, I'm only uh, extrapolating what I saw on the real estate flyers probably two years ago when it first went out on the market. I would just think from a city standpoint, it would be beneficial to know what they anticipate on density or what they you know plan on future development just to have some kind of foresight sure to see what's gonna what's gonna come your way um, you know the only other question I had was not really a question but a comment just you know really concerned and with the enigma property that it's taken so long to get this thing off the ground I mean a civil plan is not that complicated once they're using the existing footprint of the building mm -hmm. so I mean the building is the building is the building they might reconfigure the parking lot a little bit um, had some walkways breezeways but you know you said unfortunately the gentleman passed away in october but prior to that it's been a long time it doesn't take that long to come up with civil plans especially on a building that is already there you're just putting lipstick on on this building is what you're doing so it certainly would with all of the enhancements being made right now in the city it certainly will look attractive at least at this building you can't at least paint the building or something you still see the old purple and green and whatever color from Lindsay Lummer back in the day sure. would also help the city with possibly marketing the other couple of parcels that are still sitting there because um, everything is you know there's a lot of movement a lot of activity on here which is very good but that building just looks pretty sad and you know I, I, I get that unexpected's happened but prior to this unexpected happening we didn't see much aside from a fence going up so that's all I want to add. Thank you. Thank you. This is Donahue. Can you tell me what's happening to the Grow Financial Building right across from Dunkin' Donuts? I'll have to check on that for you. I don't, I'm it's sorry. It's been I don't have, fenced in. It's all fenced in. I don't have, do you have anything on that? That's, that's Tampa. That, it used to be a pharmacy and that's Tampa. Yeah. It's and actually a Grow split Financial property. and then, no. Yeah, and no. then a pharmacy. It's the, the next one. one. We're talking about right across the street from Dunkin' Donuts. Isn't that us? No, it's You're talking about uh, next to the uh, the uh, credit it union. A, it used to be a first union building, mm -hmm. not the credit union, but the next one, which that's well into the city of Tampa, I believe. Oh, then okay. right before the church, I think is what. Definitely city of Tampa. Yeah. On that right. corner. I saw it since yeah. then. I, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but honestly, I don't know what's going on. There. I think you know that one and the one at Fowler right across from Publix, those are sitting there, right there on our border. I mean, you think we need to get somebody to tell us what are they doing? What's the city of Tampa doing? What's Hillsborough County doing? Because that affects us. That's our mm -hmm. our door. Well, I can speak to that a little bit. You're talking about the uh, yeah. Whistle Junction? Yeah. Yeah, I, I've been meeting and in, in dialogue with Tampa for several months over that property. I, I have met on site with um, 
members of Tampa's code enforcement, uh, supervisory members out there, they initiated an, another, a new case against the property, um, but, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, they don't seem to be as upset as we are about it. Yeah. Um, Mr. Mueller has been helpful in this, seeing as he just recently retired from Tampa and he knows a lot of the people over there. Um, and I know some of them over there too because they're former uh, Tampa police officers. Mm -hmm. But they, there is an active code case by Tampa against the property once again. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's bad. I, I mean, they, they, they have done... I think they knocked the grass down a little bit, but every once in a while, yeah. I, it, and I don't want to speak out of turn here, but I, I've read their codes, and in my opinion, I'm not a code officer, but in my opinion, if they would just force the owner to maintain the property mm -hmm. according to their own code, mm -hmm. we would all be satisfied. I mean, it would still be an empty building, but it would be yeah. wouldn't be what it is, but. Right. My interpretation of what their codes require and theirs seem to be somewhat different because they, they seem to be reluctant to, because I, I took it with me and I said, well, what about mm -hmm. this? There's a section of your code that says that those boarded up windows are supposed to be painted to match the paint of the building. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, you know, it, you know, well, what? I mean, that just seems to me like this is what the code says. And in fact, their code gets very specific about the type of fasteners that's supposed to be used to fasten the plywood to the building. It's that detailed. And they don't seem to see the problem the same through the same lens that we see the problem. So, um, Well, maybe we should get some of our Boy Scouts out there. I've got some who Well, are, it's private property. Yeah, they I might mean, want it's, to paint. It's, um, I know. Through this process, though, I did find out who the owner was. And... and uh, He's not local Tampa. He's local mm -hmm. Pinellas County, though. So he's not like mm -hmm. he lives in Indiana or something. But my understanding is he doesn't want to sell the property, which is what I've been hearing for years. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, anyway, I well, thank you for that. I, I have been working on that, as has our legal staff and our code compliance. But mm -hmm. there's only you know so much we can do there. It's more persuasion. We don't have anything. You know. mm -hmm. Thank you. I should have told you that already. I'm sorry. That's okay. Other questions for Mr. Polly? Mr. Stevenson, anything? No, sir. Mr. Polly, anything else? No, sir. Thank you very much for your very time. Very good. If not, we're adjourned. We'll reconvene at 6 o'clock as the city council.